بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصدر وننزل من القرآن ما هو شفاء ورحمة للمؤمنين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته My beloved brothers and sisters At the time of the Prophet Musa عليه الصلاة والسلام According to verse number 60 of Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that his people asked him for water. Obviously, they wanted to drink water. There was no water around. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that mention is made of the, the fact that they needed the water and they were hopeless besides the fact that they asked Musa alayhi salam to ask Allah for water. Now, they had a habit where they would ask the Prophet, and the Prophet at the time being Musa alayhi salam, they would ask the Prophet and the Prophet would then make dua to Allah, call out to Allah. Now imagine there's no water at all. And here is the Prophet. Musa فَقُلْنَا When Musa alayhi salam asked for water for his people from us, we told him, what did we tell him? Allah automatically gave him almost instantly the water in a specific way. فَقُلْ نَضْرِبْ بِعَصَاكَ الْحَجَرِ Verse number 60, Allah says, we told him to strike with his stick the rock. So he struck it and suddenly these 12 springs gushed out of the rock. Something considered impossible was actually possible. Subhanallah Rabbil Alameen. You know, I have witnessed the drilling of boreholes and at times they hit rock and they drill through the rock and they suddenly strike water and it splashes up. And I'm thinking, Subhanallah, how Allah allowed that stick of Musa alayhi salam to strike the rock in a way that the water came gushing forth from the rock by the power of Allah. So Allah granted them healing. They had the water, they drank from it. Water is very healthy, obviously. You and I know that many of us have the intake of water is too little, yet it is there. We waste water sometimes, which is terrible. So if you want to achieve the goodness, you need to conserve and at the same time, utilize in the best possible way. Make use of it, appreciate it and thank Allah for it. And don't become hopeless. If Allah could cause the rock to split and water to gush forth, Allah can do anything. Subhanallah, have faith, conviction. Obviously, people might say, well, that was Musa alayhi salam. Indeed, but that is Allah. That is Allah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we told them, Kulu wa shrabu min rizqillah. Eat and drink from the favors of Allah. Do you know, there is another verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we provided them with food from heaven. We gave them the man and the salwa. We gave them water here, Allah is saying. We gave them everything. What didn't Allah give us? I sit and I look at some of the fruits and vegetables that we have, the bread. And when you enter the supermarket, we exchange a little bit of money for some beautiful food. And even if it's a tin of baked beans, imagine where it was, where it was sown, where it grew, where it, the crop was harvested, how many people worked on it and where it was transported, where it was sold, and who sold it thereafter, how it was packed, where, how it found its way onto the shelf. That's on one hand. The other hand with you, how you worked and how you earned and what you did and all of that. And then you marry the two and you met at the point where you bought this can of baked beans, then you opened it. And if you take a look at every single thing, there is a can opener, there is the can, there is your utensil, there is a stove, there is so much more. These are favors of Allah. When you think about them, there is a lot of healing. A lot of healing. You start looking at the blessings that Allah's actually blessed you with. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. And Allah describes the Quran in Surah uh, Al-Baqarah, verse number 97. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Hudan wa bushra lil mu'mineen. In the Quran, there is guidance and glad tidings for those who believe. If you believe, you have guidance, glad tidings. Look at the story of Musa alayhi salam. If you're a believer, that story of Moses will enlighten you. 
it will make you so happy. It will show you after so many struggles how they came out of it. It will actually make you realize that for every Pharaoh there is a Moses. It will make you realize that for every unjust person justice will be served. It makes you realize that everyone and everything has a prescribed time after which Allah will ensure that goodness prevails. Allah gives you respite in order to correct your ways, your habits, whatever else it may be. But that's the gift of Allah. So remember that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says uh, in verse number uh, 103 of Surah Al-Baqarah, He speaks about the disbelievers and Allah says, If they believed and they did good deeds, if they believed and developed their consciousness with Allah, they developed their taqwa, they then did good deeds basically. Allah says, they would have achieved a lot of reward from Allah. وَلَوْ أَنَّهُمْ آمَنُوا وَاتَّقَوْا لَمَثُوبَةٌ مِّنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ خَيْرٍ لَوْ كَانُوا يَعْلَمُونَ If only but they knew that if they believe and did good deeds, then there is a great reward from Allah that they would expect and they should expect and they would receive. So for all of us, there is a lot of hope in this because we're believers and we're doing good deeds, Allah says, do you know what? By the will of Allah, you will achieve a lot of goodness that's going to come in your direction. Now, there is mention in verse number 109 of jealousy, the jealousy of some of the disbelievers, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if they would, if they could, they would have turned you away from your faith out of jealousy that you are worshipping your maker alone. No sticks and stones, no deities, no people, no trees, no nothing besides the one who made you. When they know that sometimes the people because of materialistic reasons or whatever other reasons there may be, they actually turn away. They want you to turn away out of jealousy. So Allah says, Hasadam min indi and fusihim. They knew that what the truth was, but after that, their jealousy made them try to drive you away from your faith. Allah says, don't be driven away from your faith. Allah speaks about something very interesting at the end of that verse. He says, Fa'fu was fahu. Hatta ya'ati Allahu bi amrihi. Forgive and embrace. Forgive and embrace until Allah comes with his instruction. Because Allah is indeed all able and all capable. So the point I want to highlight here is forgiving and embracing. A lot of the times we are hopeless and we actually haven't healed simply because we haven't forgiven. We haven't let go. So the burden is becoming bigger and bigger. So Allah is telling you, Fafu was fa'u. Do you know what? Just excuse them. Just ignore it. Just forgive them and embrace. Keep the peace. And obviously this depends on what type of crime is committed against you. To forgive is something you're being encouraged to do. But to forget is not simple. And it's not an Islamic teaching to forgive and forget. Especially when the crime is terrible. Because Allah tells you forgive but remember it so that you're not bitten from the same point twice. Amazing. Remember this. So my brothers and sisters, Allah is telling you to forgive and let go. Embrace. If you can do that, you will achieve a lot of goodness. Many people don't forgive. They say, how will I forgive? How can I forgive? They've done a lot of bad. Just let go of it from your heart. You don't have to communicate it to them. They don't need to know you've forgiven them because they probably haven't even asked you for forgiveness in many cases. But you can just let go of it from your heart. And you can say, oh Allah, I make you bear witness that I've forgiven this person. I don't want to have much to do with them. I don't really want to associate with them because I don't wish to be bitten twice. So I may not be able to embrace them, but I will at least forgive. That's a very powerful message. My brothers and sisters, try it. No matter what they've done to you, try to forgive. Even if you cannot embrace, at least you've done one thing. And if you have forgiven and embraced, always remember if it was something really bad that happened to you, that it could happen again. 
It will take time for them to prove themselves to you that this will not happen again. And over time, you may end up forgetting because of how good the times have become. But initially, it's not like that. Initially, you won't forget. It's going to take a long time to heal the scars of what happened, but you've forgiven. People ask sometimes, can I forgive but not forget? And I said, obviously, you're a human. How can you just forget, especially when it's something bad? But forgive them. So may Allah grant us that comfort and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open for us the goodness. And let's try and remember that every goodness that we have is from Allah. Keep on asking him for the goodness. And when you have a good heart, Allah will indeed recompense you for that good heart. That doesn't mean you should allow people to trample all over you, but it does mean you can forgive and you can take heed. May Allah bless us all. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallama wa baraka ala nabiyina Muhammad. وننزل من القرآن ما هو شفاء ورحمة للمؤمنين